Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and today we'll be talking about generative AI. So to understand generative AI, it is very important to understand like or to have that background of deep learning modeling. So you should know, okay, what kind of problem we solve using deep learning and then uh, what kind of problem we are going to solve using generative AI and for what purpose generative AI is being used. So at least uh, to, let's say start with the basic context setting, like what is AI, what is machine learning, at least different uh, definition point of view, and then it will be very easy to understand generative AI, okay? So let's start, uh, what is AI? So when we say AI, so AI is like any device which has the ability to learn and reason like human. For example, image processing, right? So we have techniques uh, to enable the devices uh, which can easily identify the uh, images. And similarly, we have devices which can easily process the text if they can easily do the audio video analytics right so that those devices or those techniques we uh, fall under ai and artificial intelligence category okay and then uh, if we keep on dividing the problem then uh, next like uh, comes machine learning okay so machine learning like uh, what is machine learning or what kind of problem machine learning solve so machine learning like any algorithm or a program which has the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed Okay, so algorithms or devices which has ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. So when we say without being explicitly programmed, what does that mean? Okay, so if we can program or if we can uh, write the exact logic, okay, for example, if we have a math mathematical formula defined, then we can clear cut, uh, I mean, we can clear cut, write 100% accurate logic and then we can further program that logic, right? That's why these are not uh, uh, like machine learning. These problem will not fall under machine learning. Any problem which doesn't have any mathematical formula defined so that we can learn based on certain pattern, right? Certain observations, okay? So those problems fall under machine learning categories. So those problems we solve with the help of machine learning, okay? For example, if I say like uh, um, a very like famous problem of house price prediction, right? So to predict the house price, do you have any mathematical formula defined or any mathematician have defined any formula to predict the house price? There is no formula, right? So that's where this kind of problem can be solved with the help of machine learning. Okay. Then further comes the deep learning. Okay. So uh, if you uh, little advance the problem, then those uh, fall under uh, deep learning basically. Okay. So what is the example? So Deep learning like uh, solve a little advanced problem and that's where like it takes help of neural network or I would say artificial neural network. So from where it originates. So if you think of a human brain, so human brain is nothing but like uh, it consists of a lot of neurons, right? And from the same uh, uh, concepts of deep learning or artificial neural network comes. Okay? So the problems which take help of artificial neural network, those fall under the category of deep learning. Okay. So that's where like they solve little advanced problem, which uh, like machine learning, uh, the machine learning can also solve, but machine learning uh, may not be achieve uh, high level of accuracy because deep learning has the capabilities to process lot of data, which machine learning lacks. Okay. And in deep learning along with, I mean, why now everybody started talking about deep learning? Because uh, we have advancement in uh, compute resources, in, in memories, and simultaneously we have a huge data. So that's where uh, we can train uh, the models on large data, and then um, that's where it comes deep learning. Okay, so this becomes deep learning, and then uh, if we further categorize the deep learning, so that's where uh, our generative AI journey will start. Okay, so we can uh, categorize deep learning models in two basic categories. One is discriminative AI and another is like generative AI. Okay, so these are the main types of models under deep learning. Okay. So what is a discriminative AI? So before that, like uh, LLMs also come in pictures. LLMs are nothing but, so in this video, I'm not going to explain in deep LLM, but in next video, I'll explain. So here to just understand LLMs are nothing but large language models. So any model which has trained on very huge amount of data, large data, okay, with huge computation power. So that becomes LLM. So that solve like variety of problems. Okay, so we'll discuss that later. Okay, so that so basically, LLMs are part of generative AI as well as discriminative AI. Okay, but let's understand what is discriminative AI, what is generative AI. So as the name suggests, discriminative means they classify the objects in certain categories, and generative AI means it generates certain things. Okay, generate the content. 
okay so that's where like check discriminative ai says it is similar to supervised machine learning or supervised learning it's not say machine learning okay because here we are taking a neural networks so uh, discriminative ai is nothing but it solve i mean it is similar to supervised learning and it has labels defined okay so for example it uh, understand the functionalities or patterns in features and then it tries to understand uh, i mean it tries to predict the labels okay so it understand the relationship between uh, features and labels and then try to predict the uh, certain labels so basically classification or discriminative okay so that's where discriminative ai comes so and a same way like i have written like based on learned relationship model classify or predict the labels okay so this is like uh, till now we have like if you are in ai world or machine learning world so you easily understand what is discriminative ai or predictive modeling right but the new thing is generative ai how it is different okay so let's understand that one so generative ai is nothing but it generates new data based on the learning from the large training data so large training data this is very important okay because if you want to try to generate the next uh, for example you are writing a sentence and you want to try to predict the next word in a sentence okay so for that it i mean model should be capable enough to understand what next word you are going to write so for that it has to learn i mean it has to be trained uh, on huge amount of data based on that only it can have that much capacity or capability i would say to uh, predict the next word to generate the next word okay so that's where generative ai comes in picture so that's where i have written can predict the next words or line in a sequence okay next thing is like, models are trained on labeled unlabeled structured and unstructured means all kind of data so generative ai models or llms are trained on all kinds of data not only labeled data or unlabeled data all kinds of data okay that is important so this is generative ai okay so till now we have discussed only in terms of like uh, definitions let's understand more in terms of examples okay so what is generative ai and discriminative ai again like we'll understand the flow basically okay so in discriminative ai we have features and labels so those features and labels are passed to the models those models are named as predictive model or discriminative models okay and then they learns the relationship between uh, features and labels and then output as a label okay this is discriminative ai and then what is generative ai it is, uh, we feed the model uh, with labeled data unlabeled data structured data and unstructured data okay and then we train the model in this huge amount of data and then what is the output output is the like new content in similar lines like uh, what kind of data you have fed into the model and it has learned the patterns in that data and then it generate new data based on the same understanding okay so what is the examples of predictive models um, so i mean what kind of output they generate they generate a number means continuous value where i say like house price prediction okay they generate a discrete numbers they generate classes 0 or 1 true or false right yes or no they uh, for example cat or dog they generate probabilities uh, belonging to one certain class right what is the probability of being cat or what is the probability of being dog which one has higher probability that will be the output okay so these are normal predictive model we all know now let's understand focus on generative ai output so these output like new text okay it could be new image so for example we have trained generative ai models on the cat images or dog images now it very well understand what are the features or characteristics of dog and now if i ask generative ai model okay what is dog then it will explain me uh, what is dog what features it has okay and uh, what uh, dog image look like then it can also generate the image of dog okay so that's where like a uh, generative ai generate the content okay not limited only in predicted or classification it can generate audio it can generate video it can generate code if you ask okay let me write the logic of a string uh, concatenation or a string reversal then it can easily write the logic okay so all those kind of like wherever content generation comes in place we take help of generative ai okay so let's take one more example for example you have dog image okay and then uh, you have uh, i mean uh, you are talking about discriminative ai so discriminative ai means it will uh, classify it will uh, categorize the uh, objects or 
uh, whatever you fed as image okay so here for example we have uh, trained our model in cat or dog images and then um, we want to uh, we want to input new image we don't know whether it is it belongs to dog or, or cat then our discriminative ai model or predictive model can easily classify whether this is a dog image or cat image okay so these kind of models are discriminative models and then when it comes to generative ai so the, what we will do we will uh, train our models or we'll try to make our model learn all the dog features okay if you are talking about dog and then if we say okay generate dog image then it can easily generate dog image or if we ask what is dog then it can easily tell me the features of dog characteristics of dog okay so these are generative ai let's take one more example for example uh, we have certain books belonging to mathematics or we have certain books belonging to semicon electronics okay any any topic any subject you take okay and in though in that topic uh, we have trained our uh, large language model or gen ai models okay and now we have, we asked a question for example these books so here i have asked question what is concept drift okay so let's say we have trained our model in all the uh, machine learning ai deep learning uh, kind of topics okay and then now our large language model easily define what is ai even they can define what is llm okay and so that's where i'm asking i'm giving the prompt what is concept drift and then uh, what output i can expect they will expect uh, they will keep the output explaining the concept of uh, concept drift i mean what is concept drift in machine learning they can easily explain and they will easily give certain examples and even if you can ask what is the importance of con concept drift okay so they can easily answer in terms of text output okay so that's it here you see discriminative ai is classifying the objects generative ai is uh, generating the text okay so here i have written llms because to generate content our model should be trained on large models so that's where here uh, it is it should be llms large language models only okay but in discriminative ai like what kind of problems like if problem is not huge okay and then our normal machine learning models also can suffice or even uh, little advanced deep learning models can also suffice or llms also you can use based on like what kind of problem you are solving okay but here it is must to use llms because otherwise your output will not be accurate okay it will be very I mean random output okay to have the accurate output we need to train the models on large data and that's where large language models comes in place okay so hope that till now this concept is clear so let's understand some more details about uh, generative ai and so now we have uh, till now we have used certain new words like generative ai large language model so one more uh, uh, concept i want to introduce of foundation models so what are foundation models okay so foundation model concept has come recently basically so when we uh, like uh, i mean for example uh, any company which uh, basically uh, creates those models for example google open ai ibm meta okay they have large data and they uh, expose the uh, pre trained model and then other companies uh, maybe who are consumer okay they use the, those pre trained model and then um, feed their own data customize or find uh, like uh, correct word is like fine tune okay they fine tune that model on their specific data for example we want to um, have llms trained on hr policies and further we want to uh, ask questions related to hr policies what, what are the number of leaves we are getting okay what is the uh, insurance uh, what are the schemes okay what is the questions from different hr policies right so for all those uh, to get all those answers you need to uh, train your model on hr policies so that's where you customize those models so you start with the base model or that model is named foundation model and then you feed your uh, data like you train on new data so on which you target to uh, question okay so that's where uh, the basic models are named as foundation models and then you train on new data uh, you uh, modify the uh, layers yeah, like okay i mean fine tune basically you uh, i mean uh, uh, you set or you modify certain hyperparameters okay so that's how you fine tune oh, and there, there are techniques okay we can talk about later okay so um, then uh, that model becomes very specific to solve your problems basically okay on your data 
So that's where the model you start that is named base model. And that's here, if you talk about in this particular diagram, so this can be trained on like uh, all kind of data, label, unlabeled, or structured or unstructured data. And then foundation model kind of uh, BERT, okay, GPT, like generative pre trans, uh, text transformer, okay, A Palm from Google, okay, generative pre trained transformer, okay. And then these are the basic models basically. And for example, if you want to have a question answer generation system, okay, then you can utilize the variants of BERT or BERT itself, okay. And then uh, you can, uh, you want to generate the question answer on HR policies, then you feed the new data of HR policies, I mean, your company's HR policies. And then uh, it, this model will be trained on that on top of the base model. And then you can easily uh, question that model. Okay. So that's where like it could be a text processing engine, it could be image processing engine, it could be video processing. Okay. Or it could be uh, code generation. Okay. So any any uh, output, I mean, what kind of output you expect, those kind of base model you will be using. Okay. So these are foundation models basically. Now let's understand what are the different applications of um, Gen AI. So in terms of uh, text applications, you have, uh, you can generate the marketing content, you can generate emails, you can generate support, chat, email, okay. You can uh, use generative in terms of general writing, blogging, okay, note taking, okay. And in terms of code generation, you can, I mean, you can ask if you are stuck in certain problems, you can ask generative AI to write the code or you can even, you can ask the explanation of that particular code, okay. So code documentation purpose, technical documentation. In terms of image, image generation, consumer, social media, images, marketing, designing of images, right? Uh, banner designing, all these uh, properties you can use uh, generative AI because all these belongs to under the gen uh, content generation. Then video, then you can uh, easily uh, edit the video. You can uh, clearly easily generate new video. Okay. And others, you can use generative AI in terms of gaming, RPA, that property process automation in terms of audio generation. Okay. So these are many applications of generative AI. I mean, this uh, uh, is taken from Google, uh, Google uh, Generative AI uh, document. So, okay. So, I think uh, that's it for Generative AI. Uh, so I hope and by now you have a fair idea of what is Generative AI and how it originates and what kind of problem it solves. Okay. So, next uh, we'll talk about uh, one, uh, I mean, some different topics. It could be uh, LLMs or some other topics. Okay. So, until then, uh, take care. And that's it for now. And if you're liking my video, then please subscribe to my channel and share with them. Uh, I mean, MLAI community. So, thank you.